Hi, everybody. AI engineering is the process of building applications on top of foundation models. That definition is from a phenomenal book by Chip Wren. This book is a great introductory overview for anyone wanting to know how AI-enabled apps are developed. I highly recommend this book to product managers and to software engineers looking to transition into building apps that are powered by large language models. Even if you're already building AI-enabled apps, you will learn something valuable from this book. If I were still teaching courses at the university, this would make an excellent, excellent textbook. The author is very experienced in this topic with computer science degrees from Stanford. She has had a lot of work experience. You'll find her interviewed in many YouTube videos. And she has a GitHub repo for this book that you should take a look at. Like any technical book, you should not need to read this like a novel. Browse the book. Scan the table of contents. Dive into the chapters that hold the most interest to you. Depending upon your background, your starting point may be different. If you are a systems architect, you might prefer starting with the last chapter of the book, AI Engineering Architecture. I'm coming to the role of AI from the perspective of full-stack engineering, a web development background and app development background. That's very different from machine learning engineering. On page 46, we get a comparison of full-stack engineering, AI engineering, and ML, or machine learning engineering. One of the things that this book does really well is that it situates AI engineering from the perspective of building a product, whereas ML engineering is about training a model. ML engineering is a very specialized field grounded more in theory and how to optimize deep learning models. If you are interested in deep learning, I highly recommend the book by Christopher Bishop and Hugh Bishop, Deep Learning, Foundations, and Concepts. The AI Engineering book has a good quote in a footnote. AI Engineering is just software engineering with AI models thrown in the stack. I agree with that. And the AI models sit at the bottom of the stack. That's why they are foundation models. You build applications on top of those models, usually through an API. Most software engineers these days are very comfortable working with APIs. Chapter two is understanding foundation models. Depending upon your previous knowledge and experience, you might skip or skim this chapter. But do make sure you have an understanding of post-training and fine-tuning. These topics come up later in the book. Most of my undergraduate students in data science had no idea that you could post-train and fine-tune these language models. Then again, most of them had no familiarity with APIs, and that's why they are taking courses to learn these things. But it's always a reminder to me that most people, even some very technical people, don't know how these systems and applications work. Chapter 3 introduces an important topic. Evaluation methodology. Evaluation comes down to choosing the model that is best for your application. Many people start by thinking that they'll go with whatever is the most popular model for an open AI, like GPT-40. But selecting the right model is a complex task. Chip devotes two chapters of AI engineering to evaluations. C. White's Many quickly realize that the biggest hurdle to bringing AI applications to reality is evaluation. For some applications, figuring out evaluation can take up the majority of the development effort. Chapter 3 on evaluation methodology is a dense chapter with a lot of information. I recommend that you first skim this chapter by lightly reading every sentence. Take a break. Go on to the next chapter on Evaluate AI Systems. Read that chapter. Then go back to Chapter 3 on Evaluation Methodology and read those two chapters again more closely while thinking about a specific application that you are working on. Like a lot of technical books, you will be referring back to different sections. That's why it's good to have a printed version of this book. In Chapter 4, Chip introduces the term 
evaluation driven development. She says, I believe that evaluation is the biggest bottleneck to AI adoption. Being able to build reliable evaluation pipelines will unlock new applications. CHIP identifies four buckets for evaluation criteria, domain-specific capability, generation capability, instruction-following capability, cost, and latency. She examines those criteria in the next 17 pages. Then the book goes into the topic of model selection, starting on page 179. You should read that section closely. Then there's a section on public benchmark. If you follow AI news, you will hear a lot about public benchmarks. There are a lot of problems with those benchmarks. And honestly, I don't pay a lot of attention to them. Page 200 starts an important section of the book. Design your evaluation pipeline. Read closely. This topic could be an entire book in itself. Chapter 5 is prompt engineering. You may think you know about writing prompts, but you can never know enough about writing prompts. Also, there's this new term as of June 2025, context engineering. Context engineering might replace how we talk about prompt engineering. I'm not going to read that entire treat, but let's highlight filling the context window with just the right information for the next step. What's a context window? You need to know that. Chip explains it on page 218. Be sure you have a basic understanding of context windows. There's a lot written about that. Chapter 6, RAG and Agents. I think of those as two different things. They could have been separate chapters, but it's already a 500-page book. Again, this book is to give you an introduction to these topics. RAG is a technique that enhances a model's generation by retrieving the relevant information from external memory sources. An external memory source can be an internal database, a user's previous chat sessions, or the internet. One of the things I really like about this book is that it's well-researched. CHIP identifies original papers and sources of information. For instance, C makes sure we know that RAG was coined in the paper Retrieval Augmented Generation for Knowledge Intensive NLP Tasks in 2020 by Patrick Lewis and others. Patrick Lewis is now a research scientist at Cohere. Cohere has an excellent free LLM university that really goes into details of large language models, RAG, and, and related topics. Reading the AI engineering book first is a good step before you go into the Cohere LLM University. There's also a really good interview with Patrick Lewis on Machine Learning Street Talk. I have to say that watching the videos of Machine Learning Street Talk can give you a good educational AI. That channel is full of high-quality, insightful interviews and discussions. Before I wrap up this overview of the AI engineering book, I want to highlight two more chapters. Chapter 7, Fine Tuning, and Chapter 8, Dataset Engineering. You get 55 pages on fine-tuning. Fine-tuning is the process of adapting a model to a specific task by further training the whole model or part of the model. Chip tells us that one of the questions that he hears often is, when to fine-tune and when to do RAG? The book provides a fine-tuning overview, when to fine-tune, and many more details on fine-tuning. You should read Chapter 7 carefully to help you determine if fine-tuning is right for the application you're building. Finally, be sure to read Chapter 8, Dataset Engineering, which is over 40 pages. Of course, you should read the whole book, but the way you read this book will differ depending on how you approach reading technical books and what you hope to learn from this book. I'm glad I bought a print copy of AI Engineering, and I highly suggest you do the same. Enjoy engineering.